do what you can. Support a charity trying to help Ukraine right now. Uh, push your local legislator to try to argue for more uh, support from the United States. Okay, uh, we got a couple things to talk about. This is not a, a wonderful uh, video to make, but unfortunately, whenever we are looking at the information from two sides of a conflict, sometimes even the middle ground between those two sides uh, is, is not great. So... Russia claims that it has taken control of the southern uh, Ukrainian city of Kyrgyzstan, uh, which is right next to Ki uh, Kiev. The Russian army has claimed it has taken control of the strategically important city of Kherson in southern Ukraine as Moscow's invasion of the country entered its seventh day. The Russian divisions of the armed forces have taken the regional center of Kherson under full control. He said in a televised remark uh, earlier on Wednesday, he claimed that the public services and transport were operating as usual. The city is not experiencing shortage of foods and essential goods. Uh, he added that talks were underway between the Russian army and local authorities on maintaining order, protecting the population and keeping public services functioning. I, yeah, I, I doubt that. Uh, Kirsten, uh Major, uh, however, sent a Facebook post. We are still Ukraine, still firm. Uh, apparently, contradicting the Russian army's claims, he said he needed to find a way to collect the bodies of the dead and restore electricity, gas, water, and heating where they are damaged. I would be more inclined to believe this side of, uh, of things, because this, given the amount of civilian infrastructure that has been destroyed, uh, by Russian tanks, uh, this feels infinitely, infinitely closer, uh, to what I would consider potentially the truth here. We are going to continue on here, uh, but I want you right away to complete these tasks today uh, means to perform a miracle. Al Jazeera's Andrew Simmons, reporting from the city of Lviv in western Ukraine, said that our reports of Russian soldiers being seen on the streets of Kherson. This is a strategic city because it links the uh, the Russia, a next Crimean peninsula, to the mainland of Ukraine. He added Russian forces were now uh, trying to take control of Mariupol, a key southeastern port city. So there's a much bigger city uh, on the Sea of Azov. There's a colossal fight going on there. And this is this is why this area is important. Right around here, like th this, this is where they're trying to be. This allows them to pincer. This allows them to push up into Kiev. This is not... You don't want to fight a war on multiple fronts, and unfortunately, holding the capital city uh, of Kiev becomes infinitely uh, harder to the point of strategic impossibility when you are trying to fend off enemies from all sides. Oh, boy. The UK Defense Ministry said it has an increase in Russian air and artillery attacks on populated urban areas over the past two days. It also says that Kharkiv uh, and Maripol were encircled by Russian forces and that troops have reportedly moved into the center of Kherson. Uh, Al Jazeera's Jana Hull, also reporting from uh, Lviv, said that there appears to be a pattern of Russian attacks aimed at depriving Ukraine uh, and access to its Black Sea coast. Uh, I Yeah, it makes sense. This would be a way that you would prevent people from escaping. Uh, you, you start slowly locking down uh, all of their access on land, and then you block all of their access on water. Russian President Vladimir Putin said that uh, on Thursday, he ordered troops to invade pro-Western Ukraine to demilitarize and denazify the country. Uh, Putin recognized the breakaway regions days before he launched uh, the full-scale invasion. All in all, Russian military damaged more than 1,500 military facilities. Uh, adding that 58 planes, 46 drones, and 472 tanks and other armored vehicles have been destroyed. Meanwhile, Ukraine's president, uh, Vladimir Zelensky, on Wednesday accused Russia of seeking to erase Ukrainians, their country, and their history. And this makes a little sense. Uh, not makes sense as in it's a good thing to do, but makes sense uh, as, it's, as in it's consistent uh, with what we've seen from Russia so far, considering that they destroyed the fucking Holocaust Museum, of all things. Uh, in Ukraine. Remember, you're trying to denazify Ukraine and yet you destroy the Holocaust Museum uh, as one of your targets. Can you? Can you imagine? Can you imagine that argument? Try, try squaring that circle for me, please. Please. In a video address opposed to Facebook, Zelensky said the West response was not enough, calling for more international support, including backing Ukraine's bid to join the European Union. Uh, yeah, no, this is this feels like one of those things like you should expedite. 
you should expedite. Ukraine's like, hey, we're getting attacked. Can we please, like, join the Union so we can be protected? Ah, but you see, people talking about, the people talking about Nazis are Nazis. Jesus Christ. Uh, they said they know nothing about our capital, about our history, but they have an order to erase our history, erase our country, and erase us all. Zelensky also claimed nearly 6,000 Russian soldiers have been killed since the invasion began. Russia has not released overall casualty numbers, and the figure could not be confirmed. More than 650,000 people have fled Ukraine to neighboring EU member states since Russia's military invasion of Ukraine. The U European Commission said on Wednesday. Okay, so we need to juxtapose. The other half of this, uh, Ukraine denies that Kherson has fallen. Uh, the Ukrainian ministry, uh, Minister of Defense has denied reports that the southern city of Kherson has fallen to the Russians. According to the info from their brigade, and battles go, uh, the battles are going on now, a spokesperson for the ministry said. The city is not captured totally, and some parts of it are still under our control. Russian state media had previously reported that Russian troops had taken full control of the city. There is a... There's a juxtaposition that has to be happening here. Um, if I were to give just a little bit of, of, of levity in a situation like this, as, as terrible as this is, um, the Ukrainian government is actually giving uh, some, some very helpful advice to its citizenry. I, I, I hate that I'm going to have to end this with a, a smidge of humor, but Ukrainian authorities say that citizens do not need to declare caption, uh, captured Russian tanks and military equipment for tax purposes. Ukrainian authorities have reassured citizens that they don't need to declare captured Russian tanks uh, and any equipment they pick up as personal income. Said, have you captured a Russian tank or armored personnel carrier and are worried about how to declare it? Keep calm and continue to defend the motherland. A statement from the Ukrainian National Agency uh, said there is no need to declare any captured Russian tanks or other equipment because the cost of this does not exceed 100 living wages or 248,000 Ukrainian uh, hervenia, the agency said. The sum equates to about $8,300. On the agency's website, a document in Ukrainian dated uh, Monday said the seizure of tanks or equipment would be considered a manifestation of the unity and cohesion of the Ukrainian people to fight against invaders and would not be taxable. You know that meme with Alex Jones talking to Joe Rogan? He just goes, you know, they don't tell you about the Russian tanks. Uh, they're just lying on the side of the ground and they're free. They're free. I have 485 tanks. 485, Joe. If you haven't seen that meme, it is, it's glorious. But this is literally, this is literally just that. Uh, and it is, it's, it's a little bit of, it's a little bit of levity. This whole situation sucks and it, it gets worse every single day. But there is that little bit of levity there. Um, Elizabeth, thank you for doing your points for an ada ada. You fucking ill-timed degenerate. Ukraine has fiercely resisted uh, Russia's invasion, which began on Thursday. Amid the conflict, images have emerged that appear to show abandoned Russian military vehicles in Ukraine. Here's where we are right now. Several countries have put up sanctions on Russia. Several countries... Uh, in, including Switzerland, have been cutting off a lot of their key banks. So what we have now is a Russian military that is operating without uh, funding from without. Even Hitler uh, was able to continue doing banking in Switzerland uh, during the majority of his time in World War II. So, you know, just as, as a comparison there. This means that as of right now, as of right now, uh, Russia, while they may have the bigger force, they may have the larger military, they may have more weapons, they do not have a ton of outside support. Without that outside support, they are running this they are running this military campaign entirely on their own dime. Something that Ukraine is not having to do. Uh, several countries around Ukraine are mobilizing their militaries. They are sending uh, monetary and equipment support. Uh, I would like to see personnel support being sent that way as well. Uh, we also have uh, all of the countries. So there was a vote. There was a vote uh, to condemn Russia for its actions in invading, invading Ukraine. There are five countries that voted against condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Belarus, which of course is arming itself with uh, nukes and is, and is allying with Russia. We already covered that in an earlier video. Russia itself doesn't want to uh, declare itself uh, as persona non grata here. North Korea, of course, North Korea, because they would like to see a majority of Western nations uh, crippled as well. 
Eritrea and Syria. Uh, I know less about these two nations where this is concerned, um, but I do understand. I do know why Russia, Belarus, and and uh, North Korea would. Now, as far as places who abstained, China and Pakistan were two of the countries who actually abstained from the vote. This means that, but between China and Russia, a good chunk of the fucking landmass of the world uh, has has just you know are not going to condemn them. But over a hundred, like a, a vast, a super majority of countries uh, have voted to condemn Russia and its actions against Ukraine. Now, what does that mean? Nothing. I, I'm sorry. Nothing. It means nothing. The United Nations, aside from the sanctions that are already being imposed on Russia, cannot really do a whole lot here, to my knowledge. So this vote... Uh, it doesn't it doesn't do a whole lot. It doesn't change much of anything. And I hate to say that. Calliopsal Creamy, uh, thank you very much for the happy birthday wishes. I appreciate it. Uh, one of the worst things to be doing during a birthday, but here we are, I suppose. Uh, also, BBC News two days ago says Russian news agency deletes victory editorial. A Russian news agency had published and deleted an article prematurely praising Russia's success in invading Ukraine. It applauds Russian President Vladimir Putin for solving the Ukraine problem and saying that Ukraine has turned to Russia though the, uh, through military action. It suggests the author participated, uh, anticipated a rapid victory and the piece was published prematurely. The article published by the state-owned uh, news agency on Saturday uh, and described by Christo Grobez, fat checker uh, of fat checkers as extremely shocking, even for Kremlin standards, was quickly deleted from the website. Uh, other Twitter users called it Russia's victory celebration. Uh, however, it still remains visible on the Internet Archive website, so we still have access to that. What's in the article? In it, contributor Peter uh, Akapov claims that Russia is returning to lead a new world order while making good on the terrible catastrophe that was the end of the Soviet Union in 1991. It's headlined the arrival of Russia in a new world, but the Russian word for arrival can also mean attack. Mr. Arkov justifies the virtual civil war as Russia restoring its historical fullness, gathering the Russian world the Russia, and the Russian people together. Moscow is drawing together Russians, Belarusians, and little Russians, uh, Ukrainians, he says, uh, suggesting a Russian plan to increase its sphere of influence. The architect of this act of reunion is, of course, Vladimir Putin, who is praised for taking action now. All right, so... There's one last thing we have to go over uh, for this particular video. Yeah, way to say the quiet out part out loud, very fucking loudly. Very fucking loudly. Uh, there's a TikTok that I want to show you. I'm uncertain of the validity of, but please bear in mind with a lot of the information that comes out right now, we don't know the validity of half the shit we're going over. Guys, I really urge you to watch this video because this is the most heartbreaking thing I've ever seen. For the past couple of days, I've been trying to translate Russian state media news into English, and I have just logged in to see the page of the main news outlet that has been spreading this false information in Russia. To see this page. This is incredibly, incredibly important. This reads, Dear citizens, we urge you to cease this insanity, and please don't send your husbands or your sons to a surefire death. Putin is forcing us to lie and is risking all of our lives. We have been isolated from the entire world. In several years, we will be under the same regime as North Korea. And for what? So that Putin can make the history textbooks. This is not our war and we hope we can stop him. In my previous video, I have mentioned that we have not been allowed to disclose how many deaths occurred in Russia. And while from other news we know they are in the thousands, this have not been confirmed and is actually being actively denied by the Russian government. They have now posted 5,300 Russian deaths killed in Ukraine in the past four days. They go on to say that this message will be deleted, that we will be fired and we will go to jail. But we can't handle this anymore. The letter signed is journalists from Russia, anonymous. So bear in mind, uh, this is not, you know, 100% confirmed stuff. With any of this information, take anything that you get here with a grain of salt. You have to take it with a grain of salt because a lot of this is filtering in so fast. And there are so many people who are just trying to get the information out there first and as quickly as possible. I cannot, as of right now, verify 
that particular statement. And there's too much happening as quickly as it can for me to do that kind of fact checking before something else happens immediately. So let me know in the comment section below what you find where that's concerned. I just realized there is one more thing we need to go over. <clears throat> and this one is another potentially, uh, it is it is potentially untrue, but if it is, fucking holy shit. Ukraine's ambassador to the United Nations uh, shared a heartbreaking text message exchange between a Russian soldier and his mother moments before he was killed. Uh, Sergei uh, Kislista uh, read aloud the correspondence where the soldier revealed to his mother he was afraid during a speech at the United Nations General Assembly uh, emergency meeting to discuss Russia's invasion of Ukraine. I would like to read from the screenshot of the smartphone of a killed Russian soldier, uh, Mr. Kalisti said uh, this evening. Uh, Mr. God, I'm so terrible at this. Kis... Kislit... Kislitsa. Kislitsia. Mr. Kislitsia then held up a printed version of the series of text messages and said that's an actual screenshot from someone who was dead already before he began uh, to read the back and forth. It reads, How are you doing? Why has it been so long since you've responded? The mother allegedly asked her son shortly before he was killed in conflict. Are you really in training exercises? The son then replied, Mom... I'm no longer in Crimea. I'm not in training sessions. The soldier's mother then asked where the man was and wrote, Papa's asking whether I can send you a parcel. He then questioned what kind of parcel his mother could send him, to which she replied, What are you talking about? What happened? The son then advised his mother of the location of his location and revealed the extent of the conflict occurring right before his eyes, suggesting that he was misled by his country. He went on to say, Mama, I'm in Ukraine. There is a real war waging here, the soldier wrote, according to the text messages read by the name I, I cannot pronounce. I'm afraid. We're bombing all of the cities together, even targeting civilians. We were told that they would welcome us, and they are falling up, but they are falling under our armored vehicles, throwing themselves under the wheels and not allowing us to pass. They call us fascists. Mama, this is so hard. The Ukrainian ambassador concluded by saying the final text message was sent moments before he was killed. Just imagine those killed people next to you when you listen to my formal statement. Uh, Mr. Kislitsia also used his speech to claim very clear parallels can be drawn between the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the very beginning of World War II. A major militarized state seeking geopolitical greatness launched a full-fledged military offense against a smaller neighbor in order to seize it. Deadly airstrikes on civilians were carried out across the country, with Russian troops crossing Ukrainian borders from Russia, Belarus, and the occupied parts of Ukrainian Donbass and Crimea. Reminds you of something, doesn't it? Indeed, with the beginning of World War II, you can draw very clear parallels. Uh, and the actions of Russia are very similar to those uh, that its spiritual mentors from the Third Reich did on Ukrainian soil 80 years ago. If true, that is fucked up, but that also doesn't surprise me even united states soldiers get sent places under false pretenses and many times aren't fully briefed on the nature of their entrance into another country this is not far from what we expect i know this is a lot of information i know it's a lot being dumped on and i know that this particular video may not find people very well right now because it's not great information a lot of this isn't great information if a lot of this conflict is just, it is just destroying your mental, I urge you to take care of yourself first. The rest of the world is going to keep on turning the exact same ways it has been this whole time with or without your participation in geopolitics right now. But if you can fact check, if you can get involved, do what you can. Support a charity trying to help Ukraine right now. Uh, push your local legislator to try to argue for more uh, support from the United States. We've got another thing I've got to cover in another video uh, where some of our legislators are trying to argue that we shouldn't be helping Ukraine at all unless we set up the fucking Mexican border wall immediately. People are insane. For years, people made the, the dumbass claim that, oh my God, everybody on the left says people they don't like are Nazis. But now we're seeing literal people with actual Nazi apologia that are just running with it wholesale. And yeah, what does Mexico have to do with this? Absolutely fucking nothing. Nothing. That's the point. 
anyways did there's going to be more obviously uh a lot of the videos that are being released are probably going to be in somewhat scatterbrained fashion because it's all cherry and i can do to get stuff out at all right now with everything going on so just bear with let me know how you feel in the comment section below support my channel if you want to uh, i'm still doing 24 7 streaming right now but the subathon you can see the timer up there as we speak with all that said everybody as always insert end of video tagline here